Hello, in this mathematics video, we are going to look at the cool concept that is Euler bricks or Euler, Euler, however you pronounce it. So I'm just going to call it Euler bricks. And uh, lower history is named after, it is named after Leonard. Leonard, can you guess his surname? It's Leonard Bricks, no, it's Leonard <laughs> Euler. So that's basically the history lesson. Don't know that I'm joking. There's going to be a bit more history involved as well. So you might be thinking, what is an Euler brick? And just to confirm, just to confirm, when I talk about bricks, I am talking about essentially this, this shape, this form factor. This isn't necessarily an Euler brick, but this is a brick, the sort of bricks that you would use to make a house, make other buildings with. This sort of essentially cuboid, as it is known. This, yeah, that was terrible. This cuboid is a brick. Again, like I said, this isn't necessarily a Euler brick. I can guarantee you that it most likely is not. And a Euler brick is one where all of its sides all of its sides i haven't put lines over the other sides simply because with a cuboid there are only three unique side or three potentially unique side lengths because there are only three pairs of faces even though there's a total of six faces so there are only three potentially unique lengths on a brick and each one of them has to be a whole number so each each one of them has to be a whole number. I'm thinking, okay, that is simple. I can easily draw a brick where each one is a whole number. We can actually just sort of label it now. So let's label that four, label it six, label it seven. Are we done? No, this still is an unoiled brick. There's still actually one more, one last part for it to be considered an Euler brick and it is this the diagonal diagonal of that no that was terrible I want to redo that line please let me redo it that's okay the diagonal of every single face again there's only three unique faces potentially because there's three pairs of faces hence why I've only drawn three lines each diagonal also has to be a whole number as well. And you would work this out using the Pythagoras theorem. So if we just did a some basic, actually, you know what? Before we do the Pythagoras with this, so I want to show you some simple square Pythagoras. So to have a look, let's have a look. Could our perfect, I mean, our Euler brick have a face that was a square? So if we have, a square and we have one by one what is its length and we can work that out I've got a calculator in my hand one squared plus one squared is equal to two and the square root of two is not a whole number it is one 0.414 and there's a bunch of other digits but it's not a whole number so that is not valid let's move up one let's just move to a slightly bigger one this isn't a scale by the way two by two i don't know what happened here <laughs> so these are meant to be squares by the way even though they're not accurately drawn as squares so this is two squared plus two squared which equals eight so the square root, the square root of 8 is 2.82. I'm just going to do it all to three decimal places, assuming there's three or more. 2.828. Now let's have a look at 3 by 3. So 3 by 3. And that's 3 squared plus 3 squared, which equals 18, because this part is, is 9 plus 9, because 18, 
So 3 squared, so or square root of 18, is, is 3 times the square root of 2, which equals 4.243. Again, we'll just round it to 3 decimal places. So 4.243, 4.243. It's going to do one more, and I think you guessed it. It's just going to be going to be a 4 by 4 4 by 4 and 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 32 because this part is 16 plus 16 equals 32 and the square root of 32 is 4 square root 2 which can give us a value of 5 5.657. Again, still not valid. And this is just for a square. Mathematicians have determined that there is no square that has all of its sides the same. Obviously, it's all of its sides are the same if it's a square. But its sides, there are a whole number and its diagonals there are a whole number as well. So far, there potentially may, mathematician may discover one. This is always the way with maths and science, new innovation, whether it's technological innovations or some new way of thinking. Certain things get disproved, certain things get proved. But so far, it looks like there is no square that has a diagonal and that is a whole number so let's get on to rectangles spoiler spoiler alert there are so if we do this rectangle not drawn to scale whatsoever so if we have a side of three four this is the the most basic example that you are taught when you learn about pythagoras so if we do three squared plus four squared this part gives us I'll actually do it like this. This part, because we're going to slightly bigger numbers now, equals 9. This part gives us 16. Add them together, we get 25. Square root of 25 is equal to 5. So, yes, this has a diagonal that is a whole number and its sides are also whole numbers as well. Some other acceptable. Some other acceptable rectangles again, not drawn to scale, are 5 by 12, and this results in 13. You can do the calculations to confirm, but I think you get the picture of what we're doing, just basic Pythagoras. That was a terrible line. Much better. Oh, that almost looks straight, especially in the middle part. I'm actually very impressed by that line. If nothing else from this video, I got a good line. So this is 25, 24, 7, and yeah, I'll provide one more. Why not? And this is 17, 15, and 8. So 8 by 15 has a diagonal of 17. So that's all good. But so far, we, did, we don't have a brick. We still have shapes in the 2d plane we have these are all still just 2d shapes 2d shapes which at the moment does not have this so if we were to put a bunch of these together we can try and work it out but I already have looked at what the smallest smallest euler brick is and the smallest Euler brick is one. I'll, I'll, I'll draw it out again. I will draw it out again. It is one where One where its height, so its height, so this value here, this side, is 44. 
its width. This over here is 117. And the length, so I'm going to choose a better color. That's not the best color. And its length over here is 240. So if you were to try and just, well, work these out. So let's just, I've already got them worked out. So we can have a look. So this one over here. So the side that is 117 by 44 is 100, 125. So this is 125. I'll actually draw it with this. I'll actually draw it with a green color. So this will indicate all of the diagonals. So this is 125. Let's have a look at the other side that is 44 by 240. So 44 by 240 is the longest side or the second longest side I should say and that produces a diagonal of 244 so 244 so that's the diagonal there and now the longest diagonal which is this one over here now I can draw a better line than that yeah that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do it the longest diagonal here which is the diagonal for the side 117 by 240 produces a hypotenuse as it is known in Pythagoras of 267 so this is the smallest Euler brick see if you can find a smaller one compute I mean mathematicians have used computers over the years to see if they have they can find one and they have not so this is the smallest perfect Euler Brick. Also, one thing I wanted to mention, which I don't think I have in this video so far, is I'm just using just units for these values. They're not in centimeters, kilometers, or anything else. It doesn't actually matter what unit it's in, because it could be centimeters, kilometers, yep. Yeah kilometers longer than a centimeter but a whole number is still a whole number so that's a Euler brick there's an even cooler concept and that is and this this mysterious object is called a perfect Euler brick and a perfect Euler brick is one where so let me just draw a brick out it is one where not only are its sides whole numbers not only let me do a different color for this and not only are its diagonals of all of the faces are they not only are these using Pythagoras you can work them out whole numbers but 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 so is the diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner so this invisible diagonal that would be going through the shape is also a whole number. And as we, or you might be thinking, as I did with this Euler brick, I will now be giving you an example. And no, I won't be, because a perfect Euler brick has never been discovered. Not at all, even with the power of computers. Mathematicians have worked out using computing power with, with all like the immense power that we have in, with computers today that if and and this is a big if if a perfect a perfect Euler brick exists exists 
then at least one of its sides sides is greater drum roll please so that was like a terrible drum roll <laughs> it is greater than one trillion units so one of the sides that is so it is greater than one trillion so thousand million billion one trillion units that's much bigger than the numbers that we've been dealing with here so mathematicians so far have not found a perfect Euler brick if you think you're up to the challenge I double dare you I triple dare you I Euler dare you to see if you can find a perfect Euler brick the maths community the scientific community will go crazy they will hail you as a deity if you can the closest thing actually before I close up closest thing to a perfect Euler brick is a perfect a not perfect almost like perfect pathetic not a perfect a perfect I'm not going to be able to pronounce this correctly a perfect parallelipoid obviously part of it is parallel parallel parallelipoid actually I think I've got it parallelipoid I believe that's the way it's pronounced and this is you know what a parallel is a parallelogram I should say it's like this sort of shape so sort of just trying and a parallel pipe piped is a essentially a brick style object where four of its faces are parallelograms and the other two are rectangles so it has been discovered that there are perfect parallel pipes but as of yet no perfect parallel i mean no perfect euler brick exists or can you discover one well, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next maths video.